Uh, welcome to the historic first episode of podcast that nobody asked, but everybody needs. Volley Hotline. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here as a co-host with one of the best middle blockers, actually, I know in the world and my teammate, Taylor Averill from Team USA. Hi, Taylor. Wow, I did not pay you to say that, first <laughs> of all. <laughs> That's very sweet. That's for free from me. I'm Andrzej Vrona. Uh, and for those who don't know, I'm the captain of the Warsaw team in which we play. Uh, behind the cameras, because we are not on, there is not only two of us. Behind the cameras, we have Kuba Kowalczyk. Uh, his nickname is Kropek, and it will be easier maybe for everyone to uh, to remember. Hi, Kropas. What's up, guys? Yes. So he's the third middle from our team. This is the podcast actually of the middle blockers. <laughs> and can I say something too? You introduced yourself as like the captain of this team and him as another middle, but you guys are also like legendary middle blockers. So for those listening, like to me at least, like you guys are, everyone here is over 30. You're what, 35, 36? Yes. The kind and of still same. jumping. 35 <laughs> and 37. <laughs> like Tendons still working and <laughs> body still functioning. Like it's a miracle. You guys are my inspiration. So I'm so happy to be doing this with yeah. fellow middle blockers. We are that old. Yeah. Gropas. <laughs> but still having fun, guys. That's right. This is the most important, actually. Uh, we are here in Warsaw. Um, do you think it's not too many middle blockers for one podcast? Like we, we maybe we should get like. There's some no <laughs> doubt. There's too many middle blockers. But <laughs> guess what? Okay, I, should I just? I'm gonna hop into like what the intro is for this idea. Do you mind if I? Yeah, this is like my first question to you because this was your idea, and Volley Hotline is the name you uh, came up with. Uh, so tell me, like, what will be this podcast about and what we are trying to do here? Yes. First of all, we're trying to connect the world of volleyball, um, which is why I'm so excited to do this with someone who's not from the United States, but we're still going to do it in English uh, for now. I mean, who knows? The future of it could be we do a Spanish episode, a Polish episode. Like, the idea, more or less, is to connect the community of volleyball around the world. I know you know, all of us know. I know for myself, I get DMs of kids who have questions, who are struggling with things, and I am definitely well known in the world of United States volleyball as the guy who just kind of speaks his mind and isn't afraid to um, say how I feel. And I think in doing so, I've been able to connect with so many people in the volleyball community that I would never know or might never meet. And it made me realize that we're all struggling with the same things. And so I had the idea for... Uh, a volley hotline, which was a way to answer people's questions. But rather than just sending back a direct DM that someone would send me on Instagram, it was like, okay, how can I, everyone keeps sending me the same types of questions. Yeah. And I was like, it would be great to do a show where I just, people can send in their own things they're struggling with, don't know how to talk to a coach, like really specific things with themselves and ask us for advice and we give them. But around, advice. around volleyball or around volleyball is kind of the start. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, I'm kind of a human first athlete, second person, I think, or athlete, let's say. Um, so I think they go hand in hand, but the idea is centered around the volleyball community. So volleyball problems. Because you had, or you still have the podcast, uh, your own podcast in which you were Tallest talking. podcast on earth. Tallest podcast on earth. That's right. And uh, there was what you were like in a interviewing your guests from the world of volleyball about volleyball, about their adventure in volleyball or also people from like outside. Uh, most of my interviews were volleyball players. And what I noticed is like a lot of volleyball interviews that you'll find on the internet are really surface level questions and surface level answers. And I know so many personal stories. We all do have been in locker rooms for how many years to know that there's so much more interesting stories. There's so much more real things going on behind the scenes that no one knows about. And I was always someone who was so frustrated, like, why is this not being talked about? Why is it that I have to go to lunch with you and we eventually build a relationship for you to open up to me to then tell me that you're struggling with these things that I am too and we have this beautiful conversation? And I started thinking like, man, 15-year-old me would have loved to hear my volleyball idols say that they were struggling with shit too. And so for me, it's like, that was the idea for the podcast is like, let's create something real in a way that's authentic to me. And that's what this idea hopefully is as well, is an authentic representation of um, who I am, who we are. And this is the best part. Like we're uh, new friends. Um, you were honestly my inspiration to really do this. I've had this 
volley hotline idea to share, to find a way to build more community in volleyball for a while. And um, even doing my other podcast, it's a lot of work, as you know. You're for those of you uh, Americans listening. This yeah, guy we, is a uh, yeah, we would say like <laughs> we have because you said about these stories from the locker room, and this is what we were trying or we are trying to do uh, with Kropas and with some other guys, a bunch of uh, other guys from our team, and not only our team, like different teams from Plus Liga. So uh, we are like there is another studio here and. We are meeting together and we try to make it like a house party uh, vibe and speaking about everything, like about the league, but also about our relationship. What's the name of your podcast for those listening? Because that's the thing. People, it's so funny. Here you're like such a big deal, but like in America, like for volleyball, no one will know who you are, which is yeah, unbelievable. The, the name me. is Zgrupovanie, which means like, what, well, a camp? camp or like a sport camp or well, like when every all the players are coming together like for the national team what does it mean what, what is it uh, training is it camp like training maybe. camp okay like, okay let's say training camp and uh yeah for now like we had so many episodes i don't know how much like how many like maybe 10 because really look it up we'll write it in there it's, it's really incredible. difficult to get like so many players from different teams in one place to record it in in studio we are doing this live actually so with the questions of people live and answering the questions so this is this is really fun but i remember what like when you arrived for the first practice uh, i said hey what's up man and you were like when we are doing our first podcast this was your first question like you don't even like say hi to me you say when we are doing our first podcast because you knew that i'm doing some podcasts or you heard uh, so yeah i was also and i'm still really excited to do this and because i think like volleyball especially indoor volleyball because I think McKibben brothers, they are doing so such a good job on... Uh, Sandcast as well, Triborn. Some yeah. people doing stuff on uh, Eric Shoji uh, is doing mm -hmm. a good job on YouTube with volleyball, but this is like completely different, different thing. There is no or nothing that I've heard before. And there is no podcast about volleyball, which I knew uh, before. And yeah, we will start to, to, do, to do it. And I'm really excited to do it with you. Uh, I'm stoked. And and also for, because, you know, I think a majority of the, uh, most of this will be in English. So, you know, for fans in America, at least like, this is incredible that English is not your first language. You speak great English, which is also but why for I was sure like, there will be many mistakes. So yes, sorry, yes. sorry for that. But this is real. Like, this is how I speak English. This is how Kropa <laughs> speaks English. But we still like we are having a lot of foreigners in our team and English is the main language in, in the locker room. Uh, except Polish, of course, but to be fair to the foreigners, it's it's better to to speak this language and uh, and thank God because Polish is not an Engl easy language to pick up, dude. Yeah, so this is our this is our struggle that we are doing the podcast about volleyball, this grupowanie, uh, but this is in Polish, so we are only for the Polish audience mostly. Like we are not doing subtitles there, and maybe we'll try to do subtitles here, mm -hmm. like Polish or whatever, in the future. But but doing this in English makes this podcast go like worldwide. And I'll say originally the idea for me is Poland plus Liga is the mecca for volleyball, in my opinion. The number one, if not top three, one of the best places to play volleyball, places where people love volleyball. Volleyball here is like the NBA in America, basically. Um, or some version of it, fans go nuts. It's like nothing else. And America does not have that. They're doing it on the women's side now, which is amazing. But for the men's side, they don't have it. And so that's why when I originally came here, I was like, this is so exciting because I'm going to be teammates with some people who not only speak great English, but are also at the age, let's say, where it's no longer just about ourselves and our career, like trying to find ways to give back and build something amazing. And I mean, look at this studio, like you're clearly a go getter and like you have an idea and you make it happen. Um, so I feel super blessed to have ran into you, our paths crossed. And now, you know, for me, it's not just about can we introduce uh, Polish fans to American fans and like can we it's also to me can we build something that speaks to the world of volleyball we're choosing English because hopefully that's kind of the medium and thank God it's my first language but it's uh, you know the medium for being able to include as many people as we can as possible the ideas for the show are endless Man, it's only middle fun. blockers for now but we're gonna bring on <laughs> yeah this is fun <laughs> like you said about the studio like this is the third podcast we are shooting uh, on green screen okay so where are we today? This is a good question. Where a good are question. we today? 
Well, we could be literally anywhere. I, I, I'm excited. I'll be honest. I don't even know. I've used the green screen feature on because like we, yeah, we can TikTok be everywhere. And I, uh, we we had this conversation like before. Okay, so what picture will be like behind us? And you got this idea to make it like every time different place, like different, I don't know, a different background and depends on our mood and how we feel. So I ask you today, where are we? Yeah, great question. <laughs> Honestly, if I could put up a background, it would be almost what I see out here. You guys don't know, but we're on like a seventh story, uh, like a apartment business there, structure. The, just the business Whatever. structure. Whatever, we're, we're the seventh story. Just the yeah. offices like around us. So nobody's nobody lives here, like just That's right. offices. But it's the seventh floor. And when I look down on the street, it's quiet, it's snowed, and you can just see some car tracks, but it's really quiet. And I, there's a, a desk over there, and I was just sitting there just like pondering life. It made me feel really just like it's kind of cozy. So that is in some way, it's that time of year. It's January. Depression season's right around the corner. <laughs> but we are inside know? or outside? <laughs> we are um, literally, it's, I, and for me, it's my eyes just looking at that street. And that street is just we are inside. But you know the that street. you know that we can sit on this street and these cars can go. I like just thought of that right now. That's <laughs> the best. Maybe that's what we'll do for the first episode. <laughs> and if you guys have any thoughts or questions for green screen stuff, please let us know. I mean, we can do so much with it. It can turn into something that's like a regular, a reoccurring thing. It could be our mood. Yeah, because at There's first I thought like, okay, the best thing is so we sit inside some locker room, like yeah, some guys, a huge would, locker room. I like, would love to see you in the greatest locker room ever. Like, wow, I didn't like so it. Impressive. Like an NBA style locker room, like huge, like with the beautiful carpet, with the logo of podcast, like huge TV, because we will need a TV if you send us this, uh, this questions to us, like in DMs, because this is the very important thing. Like you can send us this, uh, this questions or your struggles, uh, DM on Instagram right now because we didn't uh, came up to like we're gonna work on getting like a WhatsApp or a number. Or yeah, yeah, we will see. But for now, it's uh, only in the DMs on Instagram to your account, which is currently right here, and my Instagram account, which is also like somewhere here, and uh, DM us like the vertical videos, short videos, like let's say ten. Nothing more 15. than a minute. Yeah, nothing more than yep. a minute with your question and. Uh, we will play this question over here, like few questions uh, during our uh, our show, and we will try to answer them. And maybe, which could be also crazy, uh, we will choose one question, and because we know a lot of people inside the world of volleyball, and I'm playing 17 years in Plus Liga, so hopefully all the guys will answer my <laughs> my phone. Maybe not all, but most of them will answer my phone. So maybe we can pass this question to some famous more famous guys than than me Gropas and you in the world of volleyball to respond on these questions and also put this video over here so everybody who is sending us these videos has this possibility to to connect in some yeah. weird way with some other volleyball stars oh, such a good idea i think that's a fantastic idea really and just to hit home the point like i want this to be as personal as possible in the sense that I would prefer these questions to be more like, what are you struggling with personally? Are you having a hard time talking to your coach? Or like one I get all the time is, uh, you're a bench player and you're trying to get more playing time. Like ask the question like, hi, my name's whatever. Um, you can make up a name if you don't wanna be seen. Maybe at some point we'll find a way to like blur your face or I don't know, do something because I do want pe I want it to be a space where people can be so honest with their questions because what I don't think people realize is we're all struggling with the same things and so when you're able to be vulnerable with us we will there we will uh, answer that question live on our show uh, or live right now um, yeah because uh, now I now I thought about it because this could be some really hard or difficult questions for this person to ask and i think this is the the problem and Krobek, you will probably agree with me this is the problem we have in the other podcast which we do because we also do some podcasts not about volleyball and we do one with the uh psychologist and sexuologists uh like about emotions in our world like not in only in sports but everywhere and we were asking people to write down questions to us and there are not many of them like people don't feel comfortable to write 
some difficult questions and uh, and sign them with their name and 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 surname. So maybe it's here's can I say something real quick? This show's gonna be huge, and when <laughs> it is, you're gonna be stoked that you're on a show that millions of people are watching. Okay, um, and I think this is to me like I want to reward people who have the courage to say, "Hey, I have a problem, and I I want a solution. I I want to I want help." And we're gonna be really honest and vulnerable, and hopefully entertaining, and have a good time answering those questions. And you'll find a lot of the times, like we struggle with the same things, um, and we'll hopefully set the tone of like it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to express how you really feel, and this is a safe space for talking shit and having a blast and being honest. And that's what I want this to be. Um, and so I do also think like we'll we can maybe take written questions as well. Like in the beginning, really what I want is people to, to be honest. And so if you're afraid to send in a, a, a video question, but you really have a question you want, write us. Like, I, I think that's a great idea. Write us. If you send us a video question, we're more likely to put it on our show. But if you really have a great question or really need some advice, that's what this show is about, is about offering ourselves to you as a resource for advice. So write us questions, send us videos. That's the idea. But can you promise right now that you have an answer for every question that every will be question. asked? Every single question. I, I promise you, we have an answer you for are, every single question. Grobas, you are with him in the locker room for l right now, like what, two months two already? Months. Two months. I think you already know that he has an answer for everything. <laughs> he knows everything. He knows everything. I know virtually nothing. <laughs> it's incredible that I have do have answers to almost everything. Yeah. He's like a volleyball witch, like a volleyball wizard here. Wizard. Yeah, because we were just trying to figure out like how this podcast will look because I'm the host of the of any other uh, format that we are doing and I'm the guy who likes to have everything like This is why we're such a good partnership. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are like let's just go, let's just speak about whatever and without a plan and yeah, I think this is this is great combination combination uh, in this podcast. And uh, also having Kropas over there who will like say sometimes like guys like hold on <laughs> you have to uh, you have to slow down a little bit. That's why uh, at first I wanted to do uh, for you is to surprise you with these sounds, but I already showed you like before. So we have these sounds that we can use during. This like is the most perfect. This is my dream. I feel like I'm dreaming right now. I'm living out my dream right now. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. This is amazing. We will probably change them, but for the first episode, I made like a uh, few sounds which we can use. Like if you sometimes think that I'm going in the wrong direction, you can do like whatever, like this wrong answer, or the referee whistling like to finish the action, or the. And this will be after your farting jokes f for sure. Uh, <laughs> or if you're feeling like T Pain, dude. <laughs> yeah, we have some DJ vibe. Like <laughs> what? What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this one. So some mystery sound. Okay. And if somebody says, th and if you answer correctly the the question uh, of our uh, of our viewer, we will say the we will we will have the correct answer sound, which is like this. Wow, pretty impressive. And Anjay will soon find out that there is no wrong answer. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to show you how this thing with the questions could uh, look like, we have the first viewer, the first fan of our podcast. We can call him like this. Yes. Yeah, I think he will not be angry. Also the first person who knew about it. <laughs> first person who knew about it, except us. So we have the question of this guy this guy's name is eric let's let's hear the question what's up taylor and andre i hope you guys are doing well my question is about changing teams and changing different environments whether you're a junior or a professional many times we're changing teams changing cities changing clubs changing colleges how do you guys approach that change and how do you guys adjust going from one team to the next thanks bye well, first of all, I, answer for this I question. think there's like, a, I'm kind of, I would love to know what you think, because uh, I think I'm interpreting it differently. Like we might, we might be interpreting that question differently. This is a difficult question for me because I'm playing in Warsaw for eight years straight right now. And I forgot how it is to, to change teams. Kropas, you are one year more yeah. here yeah. in Warsaw I'm than me. It's so my wow. ninth season here. So wow. we, we are not changing our place it's for like a long time. It's like freaking Kobe and the Lakers or, you know, for that's a long crazy. Time. So comparing to the players who change like every season, because I, I know the players who 
uh, who do like this. We are like we are doing no changes at all. I'll I'll tell you what I'll give because as someone who's almost on a different club every year, um, and going back with the national team and then going to a different club, I think this advice is something I would give um, to all professionals who are playing in foreign countries and even to kids who are joining new teams. Um, I think it's so important to figure out what it is that you do and what it is that works for you and keep that in whatever environment you go in. I think I know for myself, it's like, I'm a chameleon. So I adapt to like, okay, if the vibe's this way and we all like talk about how much we hate practice or whatever, I'm just kind of like, all right, yeah, like, yeah, it does suck. Or yeah, you're right. It is cold in here. Or like, if you have teammates that are very like, no, like finding the positives, you end up like also being like, yeah, I guess you're right. You know? And like, you kind of adapt. And I think trying to, it's easy for me at least to feel like I get pulled in a bunch of different directions. And so trying to keep what is mine and bring that everywhere I go is difficult, I think. So it's like, if you're the type of player who has that positive outlook and wants to continue to cultivate that, you have to find a way to bring that with you. Even if you're in that environment where like all the players are talking about how much they don't like practice and you can be the guy to be like, dude, we have to find a way or whatever it is. It's just easy to lose yourself and just adapt. And I think that's like in our deep in our DNA to adapt to whatever tribe we're a part of. And so as someone who's had a lot of experience changing teams, and this to me, I also think about the weight room and how I practice. It's like, you have to figure out what player you are, what works well for you and keep that and hopefully share that and inspire those around you with the type of player that you are. Yeah, I think it's, it's also important to go everywhere with open mind, like to, to have this attitude that you want to learn, like learn as much as possible. And I think that the mistake is to go with the attitude that, okay, I was doing these exercises for all my life and I don't want to change nothing, like, because for sure this works for me and nobody else, like the new people will not tell me how I should practice right now because this what I knew, we, what I know from the previous teams is looks fine for me, and I don't want to change my attitude. I come, I come from the new, to the new team, but you guys have to accept that I'm like with my with my way. I'm with, I'm going my way of volleyball, and you have to accept it. No, I think everybody who change uh, who changes teams like a lot should always be open minded and be ready to learn from people around them because this also will be difficult if you have because for sure you have some leaders in the team some strong characters some not that strong characters maybe the coach is more like cool and and with chill vibe and maybe he is like really with the strong hand and ru uh, ruling the team mm. on his uh, in his way and maybe they don't like the players who are who don't want to like go how to say go uh off on their own on, yeah yeah <laughs> off the beaten path off the beaten path so so it's always good at the beginning to to listen to to learn and to to check the possibilities to how you where which place you can find in this team because for sure it will be different in every team you go and and you have to be open with the open mind and this is also a great question for the fact that this is the first time in my career I've entered a team that has been together for some time. And I came in here in the middle, kind of near the end of November. You guys had already played nine games maybe. Yeah. So this was actually like a real test for me of, okay, I can have a strong personality and I think I have a strong character. So coming here, it was like, I wanted to expose who I really was. Cause I, I have worked a lot on, just constantly trying to authentically be myself. And at the same time, uh, I don't want to step on any toes early. I don't want to mess up the vibe. And so I was kind of like a, I don't want to say a shyer version of myself. I think that would probably <laughs> not be the truth, but like trying to find my place on the team. And uh, I was very, very lucky. And I'll say this with absolute truth that this is the, uh, one of the best teams I've ever been on in terms of people. I got really lucky. And I know a lot of players who have gone to different teams or are in situations right now where uh, they don't have great teammates and they feel really isolated and alone. And I've been there and I just 
want to keep this on a positive note. I am so stoked to be here um, with you guys and like have such a good group that was like really welcoming to me. And I actually think uh, my energy fit this team really well. And I, I think and hopefully I've settled in well. You know what I think what was the hardest part for you? That we were already winning everything. We lost just one game before you came and you had to figure out how can you help us more? Like what mm. can you deliver to, to be even greater than we are now before you came right yeah and like you know i we also on this team have four middles who are all really good three of them are in this building <laughs> you know? and uh, yuri who's also great you know and you guys were playing so great and i'm like well they brought me here to start also right like that's that's what i thought the plan was and so the first couple games go by and i don't start and i'm kind of like okay like i'm so okay what's with the it. idea like yeah they... what's the idea you know and uh i think Luckily, I'm able to like really adapt. I have this on the national team. If I'm not starting, I put more energy and emphasis on the things I can control in the weight room, doing the little things to be ready for when that or if that time comes. Um, but I don't know. I, I think the again, I feel so lucky that, yeah, the team was winning, which made it really hard to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? It's not like I'm this middle blocker who's like, you know now that I'm here, we're going to not lose ever a game or something, you know, like we're <laughs> normal people. So, um, yeah, it was weird for me, you know, of being like, yeah. And then I get here and we're still winning. You know, other than that loss to Scar, like we're still winning. And I'm just like, yeah, all right, I guess I'll just keep like trying to find a way to fit in and help. And, and hopefully I have, I mean, I hope, I hope that I've brought, and I, I feel like, yeah, um, but this is, this is the easier, uh, example, but when was the last time you were changing team, but, you didn't have such a like good position in the world of volleyball because right now as a uh, guy who is in the national team of USA, one of the best national teams in the world, like always on the podium or close to the podium of the world competitions, uh, Olympic games and, uh, and VNL. So you have your, like people know who you are in the world of volleyball. So they are not buying like a, we say a cat in the in the, what, in the in, bag in the, in the bag like you know, so they don't know who are they buying they know so when was the last time you were changing team as a guy like who the people who are buying you they they don't they know Did they don't used know. to buy cats in bags is that why that's a phrase in poland <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have it <laughs> we have this we have this phrase so when was the last time like they they were not wow. sure like what you can bring to the team and you had you were not so confident like you were right now i mean i was really lucky in terms of i went straight from college into the italian league and not a lot of players get to do that i was lucky enough to get to do that for basically free <laughs> but i went to the best league in the world one of the best leagues in the Which world team uh to padova mm -hmm. and uh <laughs> i was never a player who knew a lot about international volleyball like most american boy volleyball players and that's why we're doing this podcast so yeah. we can start to introduce them to the world's best players i had no idea you know and so i came to the super league like not knowing I was playing against Padrashkinen and like these legendary players and was just having a great time, had a great season my first year. I didn't know who I was playing against. And then uh, even on the national team, I've never been like definitive starter. So I've always felt that sense of no one knows who I am. I need to prove to the world of who I am. I need to be known, not for the sake of being known, but I want to play on the best teams and try to win and prove that I can, you know, you play your, your first professional season ever in one of the best leagues and you have success and you're like, I can do this. I'm just as good as everyone else. We're all, we're all good. And we all know the difference between uh, the guy who's the fourth on the depth chart on this team and the guy who starts is so small. The differences are so small. Yeah. And it's like that with me on the national team, there's four of us who are like really competing to go to the Olympics. They're taking three. I think I should go. So do the other three, you know, the margins are so slim. And so now it's, it's plus one. We can also oh speak about God. It. <laughs> what does that even mean? Yeah, we should speak about that. that is really interesting, actually. But uh, just to answer your question, I would say um, I kind of have always taken that part of me that's like no one knows who you are. And even to this day, it's like I think I finally made enough of a name for myself and had enough success in the best leagues for people to know who I am. But I'm just not that flashy guy who's, you know, I'm going to say this for the European fans, two, two meters 10 or for like, you know, American 
fellows listening like seven feet tall or some incredible vertical that like that person just stands out to you. I'm very undersized. I like kind of technically all of us in this room, I guess. Yeah. Um, like very undersized. And so like what I bring isn't always like the flashiest thing. Um, so I've always felt that sense of like, I'm in jail and I need to get out. And, uh, yeah, I've experienced that on a lot of teams in France, especially when I went to, fr I've been played in the French league twice when I played in Chamal. Which is a very technical team and it's a technical league. So for sure, it's a great league. Right. But for yeah. me, it's like, I just played three years in the best league in the world. Like Italian league and, uh, Polish league are arguably the best top to bottom leagues in the world. And so I was like, I felt like I was downgrading, you know, and, uh, Yeah, I had a little bit of that like dog in me in like probably an unhealthy way, um, honestly. But yeah, so that's that's when I felt like uh, almost like, especially in France, I did not get along very, foreigners and French players didn't get along super well. We did in the fact that like, I think volleyball players in general are just great people and nice and like easy to get along with. But it was kind of like French guys just wanted to do their thing, foreign guys just wanted to. So it felt even more isolating And I had even more that feeling of like, all right, I'm on my own. But do you think with these changes is the same vibe like when some when some kid is changing the school, for example? Like is is there are the same emotions? Like you should act the same in the situations that like from from the life of people who are not doing sports. Because if somebody uh, is not a vol volleyball player and they are listening to us, like how they can feel uh this this situation like for for them like how they can find the the solution in their life for the emotions which we have when we are changing teams because this is if, in my opinion is the same like changing the school or going to a new school to the uh to the group of people which is with them with uh, each other like for a long time and you have to you are the the new guy the um, which interrupts a little bit the vibe of the of the group. First of all, if you are not a volleyball fan and you are <laughs> listening to the very first episode of Volleyball Hotline, thank you, dude. We graciously thank you for your time. And we'd like to speak to you directly. And you should definitely <laughs> subscribe for more. Yes, dude, <laughs> click this button and subscribe. Um, I think it, you're right because it does all correlate it is all relative whether you are changing schools because your parents moved and now you have a whole new environment a new neighborhood or you are a, a young adult and you're changing universities or jobs it's all the same and to me this is why I really firmly believe in in getting more in touch with who you are and the more authentic the more of an authentic version of yourself you can bring the more you'll attract the things and people you want to be around And so I think it's so easy to just instantly acclimate to whatever environment you're in and, oh, okay, we're all going to go out and like, I struggle with this too, where like I'm on a new team and right now I don't really drink that much just in general. I'm getting older, my joints and cartilage and like, I just don't, it, it doesn't do it for me anymore. I have three beers and I'm like hung over for six days and my feet are swollen. It's just like not really my thing. Now I do love having a, a good time. And if the whole team goes out, for one night after a game, like I want to go, I want to dance. I love dancing. I want to go have a couple of drinks and hang out or do whatever. Yeah. But in general, like it's when you're early on and I had this in France, especially where it's like the guys are drinking wine every night or like they're coming, going to dinner and they want to drink. And I don't want to say no, because I'm like, I'm new here. I want you to think I'm cool. And I think I'm cool. <laughs> But you why know? only drinking is cool. Like you can be cool without drinking. That's the point. I agree. And in fact, as someone, the older we get, we all know the coolest thing to me is seeing someone be themselves. That's the coolest thing. But we all also know in general, when you're on a team, you kind of just do what the team does. And if you don't do what the team does, it's like you, you end up secluding yourself. So it's interesting, right? Like, so you are telling about the situation when all the team is drinking wine and they're like pouring your, the glass for you. And you're like, no, I'm not drinking mm -hmm. that. You, you want to be part of our team, you have to drink wine because we do it like every day. I'll tell you what, it, I don't think it's it ever, I don't think it's ever as personal as it feels in your own mind. So me saying no to a drink feels like they're going to think I'm a fucking loser now. <laughs> Really now nowadays also or you are thinking no, you are talking dude, about now <laughs> nowadays I don't care at all I just do my thing I'm talking about like I'm this. thinking oh, I mean I'm thinking about we we're talking about younger kids as well yeah. like in college 
dude, in college, I could not have said no to a drink. I just couldn't because I'm, I was the fun guy. I was the good times guy. And, and you so, cannot be a fun guy without, without drinking alcohol. And a that's a fact. Yes. Dude. <laughs> no, but you know, I mean, you, when you're in that environment and you're someone who like, and I did at that time, at that time, I loved drugs. I loved drinking. I loved partying. I loved just having a good time. So I couldn't just say no, even though maybe there was a better part of me that was like, I don't really need, or I don't feel like having a beer on a Tuesday. That's something maybe I'll do this weekend, but I don't want to have a beer on a Tuesday. But if I went to dinner with three or four people and they're like, yeah, we're all getting beers. You want a beer? I would say, yeah, even though I didn't want it. And that's just in my own personal life, something I've had to work through. And now when I see younger kids say no, I'm like, damn, that's so cool to me because I couldn't have done that at your age. That just wasn't me, you know? Did you struggle with that at all? Were you like... Did you ever have issues with the, I don't know, drinking is also so different, I feel like, in Europe compared to... <laughs> I think I think in our nation, like, drinking is combined with every occasion. Like, you have a new job, you drink. You won a game, you drink. You lost a game, you drink. You serve the ball under the net. You're you like, drink. You, you have you, to drink. You, <laughs> you have a baby, you drink. Mm. Uh, you're single, so you go out, you drink, and... I don't know, weddings, of course, funerals, like every, every occasion is good uh, and combined with drinking. Maybe the times are changing a little bit, but I think this is the culture of the Eastern European countries mostly, mm. because not only Poland, Russia, Ukraine, like all this, all this part of Europe, uh, but you are in France, so drinking wine is also the culture. So I think the alcohol is too much Uh, combined with every event uh, that that we have in our lives. And if you're asking me, I think when I went to my first team, and of course I was the youngest, I was 18 years old, and we were winning a lot. This was Częstochowa, and we were winning a lot. And sometimes guys were going out like even... Like we, we played on Wednesday, and we go out after the game, and the next game we play on Saturday, and we also go out. And I was like my first year without parents because I changed cities mm -hmm. like right away. Częstochowa is 200 kilometers from, from, from Warsaw. And first time I was living on my own and I was deciding like where I go, what I eat. Uh, I was surprised a little that the fridge is uh, empty if I, <laughs> if I don't buy stuff. <laughs> But this is, this is the, other, the other topic. So... I couldn't say no. I felt this pressure. I don't know uh, what about you, Kropas, when, when you came to the team with the older guys, but I felt this pressure like a lot. I cannot do different. I cannot be different than the others. That's what I'm saying. And we, when we had, this say, yeah. we had these two locker rooms, like one locker room was for uh, smokers. The kids table. <laughs> no, for smokers. And wow. the other was for non-smoking wow. guys. And in this other team, I was playing that year with Brooke Billings, uh, huh. former Olympian of, of, of USA. And uh, Phil Eaterton also, maybe some older guys who are listening They're to They're going to really they, appreciate they those <laughs> name drops, yeah. Uh, so we were just few guys in the non-smoking locker room. And there were like four or five of us. And in the other locker room was seven or eight guys. And I think, okay, this was not never a pressure like to, to smoke or not. But with drinking, like... And right now I'm not drinking any alcohol because of my health problems. I needed to change something. Like I'm not drinking even beer for six months, like nothing. And at the beginning, like every time it was shock for everyone, mm -hmm. like going for dinner or going for the, I don't know, party or after, after the game. And you just say, no, I'm not drinking. And they're like, why? Oh, come on. Just one. Right, let's go. So at the beginning, it was, it was really difficult. Right now, I, uh, I think everybody already knows and nobody's surprised. But I think we are living in a culture that has this pressure for doing what everyone else does. And, and it's not only with drinking, but with everything. Like if you, I don't know, I remember in my primary school, like everybody uh, started to, to play some, some games, uh, What was it called? I know. I, I don't know even how to say this. These games in English, like we, like we had. The, okay, let's say Pokemon. Poke everybody had was started to collect uh, cards of Pokemon, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't like it. Those really. were good <laughs> times, though. By the way, I but I didn't. But I, I'm not the, f I'm not a fan of Pokemon. But okay. 
everybody on the break between classes was playing Pokemon and changing these cards. So I didn't want to be like outside uh. Uh, sitting on my own. So I started to, I asked my mom to buy me a few and, and like I had few, but I didn't understand what's going on and why this one is more important than the other. But I was just going with the with the flow with all the other uh, kids in my in my class. So in volleyball, it's it's the same. But what I wanted to ask you, like, were you preparing to when when you when you knew that you are going to a new team? Were you like preparing before, like checking the names of the players, like where they played or how? Okay, now it's easier because you have Instagram, so you can check the personality of the of the guy just watching him on on his social media and you can ask some his uh, for like teammates that he ha that he had before what kind of person he is but were you like preparing uh, and checking these people with with who you will play in the new team or you were just going like let's of, of let's course see, the king of structure <laughs> let's see what happens yeah this, that's i think this is a good question yeah i think it's interesting i i am immediately <laughs> the first thing i thought of is um what what would i be preparing for I don't know, let's say, because there is this pressure and used to, I think, every, everyone as a kid has this pressure to be, uh, to be welcomed nice, like, so I want everybody else to like me. I wanted, I wanted this really, like, when I was young, this was important for me. I, I wanted to, uh, to be, like, important person in the, in the class. I never wanted to be, like, the shy guy in the end, mm. in the end, and not... And not connected with with the group. I wanted everybody to to like me. So uh, maybe it's the same like in the team that you wanna you wanna buy yourself inside the team. So you need to I don't know know with which guy you can speak really open and joke a little bit harder than with the <laughs> with the others or not to not to say something inappropriate at the beginning. So everybody will say. That you are not uh, not the guy they wanted in the in the team, and they will separate you because you are like a shitty joker, and every uh, joke you say is shit. <laughs> hey, <laughs> dude! Finally, we used it. <laughs> um, okay, I I see what you're saying now. Yeah, I think honestly, I've I was thinking back when I was younger too. I was always someone and. I don't think I started drinking or doing drugs because I wanted to fit in and be cool. I also just enjoyed having a great time, but it was always like my advantage. Like that was cool. Like it was cool to show up late and be kind of stoned. Like that was me, you mm -hmm. know, in high school when I was young and in college, like that was me. And, uh, for those of you who don't know who I am that well, check out my podcast, Doss podcast on earth. You can learn a lot more about my story. We don't need to make this too much about, about me in that time in my life. But a lot of people know me also as like, I was the party kid, you know? And that I think I can say I was the party kid also like during high school yeah. and at the beginning of the volleyball first, when I was single man, like, uh, I think it was, it was too much because after every, I was playing in Bohatov after every game that we won, we were coming with a few players, especially Facundo Conte, uh, and, and Wojtek Wodarczyk other, uh, Pin hitter, outside hitter. Which, by the way, we call them on our team, our coach calls them wingers. Wingers, Pin yeah. hitters, outside hitters are known as wingers on this team, and I love it so yeah, much. Because they play on the wings, That's of course. Right. Uh, yeah, so we were, like, coming to, to bigger cities for party. I'm from Warsaw, so right now I'm, I'm lucky because I play at home, but before I was playing in, like, outside Warsaw, outside of Warsaw. So, yeah, we were partying a lot because we were all single and we had nothing else to do. And we were young, so why not? Right now, I have uh, one kid, second kid on 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 the on the way, and I don't have a need so much to to party. And we were talking about this. I think we were talking about this before too. It's like when you have a kid or a family, you have now the ultimate excuse to say no and and have people be like, oh yeah, okay, I get and it. This is good because before I didn't have any excuse. Like, right, we're going out. I don't want to go. Like, come on, you have to go. Like, you have right. nothing else to do. You will right. sit alone at home, and what do you, will you do? Watch TV? Like, we have to go on a party. And dude, my personal journey with that, as someone who doesn't have a dog, or that's the other one, a dog or a family, a wife, kids. Like, I don't have that, and so I've always felt, and for so long, I was the guy to be like, yeah, I'm down, and like. 
if we were going to go out and drink all night, like I was up to par, I was always one of the last guys or having a blast or like, you know, I was that guy. And as I matured and got older and, and found out that like that part of me is now my past and not the direction I want to go in my life, I had to learn new strategies. And the truth is for me, like just saying no is so hard. It is to this day and I'm very confident and continuing to put in the work to build confidence in who I am, so but it's what, still so, hard. So what will you say to the kid uh, that is changing the team, changing the environment, and there is a huge pressure on doing drugs, drinking alcohol, uh, like some other stuff. Uh, what should he or she do? First of all, uh, whoever you are, if you're in that situation, I feel for you because um, the obvious answer would be, well, don't do that. You know, it's easy, it's easy to say. It's easy to say. And I think, you know, I am just such a firm believer in being who you are. And so if you're someone who likes to have drinks and you're on a team where they're drinking and they offer you a drink and you want to have a drink. Go for it. Maybe take the drink. <laughs> God, dude. Uh, yes, but if you're under 21 in the U.S., you're not supposed to and you shouldn't. Mm. But like the truth is, like I was the kind of guy that needed to learn the hard way. It didn't matter if Michael Jordan uh, had a, a, a special conference with just me like this. And he was said to me when I was 18, like, you should stop smoking weed or you'll never be a professional player. Like, it didn't matter who it was. I had to learn by getting in trouble. And you would say to him, like, but after every championship, I see pictures while, I, while, are you, while you are smoking the cigars in the locker yeah, room. There's a lot of things you could say for sure. Um, and that's why, again, to me, I think it's so important to just be authentically yourself. And I also feel like I wish I would have had more resources that I feel I have now. Um, and this goes also as like having influences on my life who were positive, more positive influences on you don't need to do those things to be yourself and to be cool. And you're right. And you said like the drinking culture is obviously in Poland a lot different potentially, but I actually think it's like this everywhere in the world, yeah. South America, North America, everywhere you go, drinking especially when it comes to like weed or smoking marijuana, like smoking weed. If if uh, I offer you some and you say no, it's like, oh, yeah, no worries. But if I offer you a drink and you say no, it's like, come on, just have a drink. <laughs> it's so strange, right? They're both yeah. they're both things that, uh, I don't know, change the way you feel and think like they're. And so to me, I, I just I find um, if you are someone who is on a new team and you're, let's say you're going to a, a university, there's a big one for college, like American universities is you, maybe you don't drink that much or you don't have any interest in drinking or drugs and you go to college and you are on some frat or you're partying on the weekends. because that's what you do in college on the weekends. And you don't want to drink or do drugs. Like, man, I, I finding ways to authentically be yourself is, When, if you can hold your ground in that environment, I just feel like you're setting the tone for like such a great future. And I know some kids, I did some an interview with this kid, Jaden Russell, who's playing at UCLA now, who's one of those kids who has no interest in those things. And we had a, such an amazing conversation on my podcast. It was cool to get to interview such a young kid like that as a reminder to myself. And I told him, I was like, man, I wish I had that type of courage at that, at that age. Because I didn't, because I cared so much about being liked. And that's my own personal problem that I deal with a therapist for, <laughs> you know? That's my own issue. And but you know, guys, you know what's the worst part for me? Like, I have a strength to say no, but I always lie with excuses. I never say the truth. Like, I don't really want to go with you guys. I prefer to sit at home. I just search for some stupid excuse. Like, my dog is sick. It's my wife problem like I, I really she planned feel, something yeah, else for and me and like. I, I really can't it's not like i'm honest and i'm authentic like i say i don't really want to go with you guys today i'm searching for the stupidest ex and excuse dude, ever and that's, that's bad i feel like it's bad but it's the better solution that not saying no that's okay. why this podcast and people like us talking about these things matters so much to me because when i was young There was no real YouTube yet. Like it wasn't that much of a yeah. thing to have these, to hear people like us have these conversations. Because if I would have heard that it's cool to just be yourself and do those things when I was younger, while Michael Jordan might not have changed my life at that time, um, at least it would have given me more resources to recognize that like, oh, I should really start thinking about like, yeah, why do I 
feel like I need to be buzzed in some way to have a good time or like, and those, as I started playing professionally and we get drug tested and like, I started thinking more about those things and eventually started, and I'm now continuing to work on like now 31, almost 32 continuing to just discover like who I really am and why I've been hiding behind certain things for so long, because you're saying now, even now you make excuses like that. I do too, dude. And sometimes I'm like, why, yeah. why can't I have enough courage to just say, no, I'm good. And so in fact, now it's like, in some way I get this weird pleasure from people ask me if I want to drink and I say, no. And they, even if they give me a little shit for it and I just say, no, I'm trying to get better at like setting boundaries for myself. And it's really, really hard. I think it's really hard. I like think for we, me at least. We start to live in the world where not drinking is cool because I hear and I speak with a lot of people and now there is this culture of not drinking, healthy lifestyle, uh, doing workouts, healthy food. And it's also it's also cool to be to be healthy, to, to say no to all the drugs and, and alcohol and, and, and other stuff. So more and more kids i think are living in the way that that it's cool not to not to drink and also here <laughs> in eastern europe which which is uh which was That's surprising to hear yeah mm. and uh yeah actually this uh, this is surprising surprisingly uh, many people are doing we speak this. a lot about drinking but you mean like being authentic being yourself and doing what you really love to do yeah this like gen, gen, the gen, gen z has the, this idea mm. yeah, to to be authentic to to be themselves and don't care about just what other people just are be saying. proud of yourself right and i think that's more of the point like whether it's a generation of like now drinking is not cool or now drinking is cool and now drinking is not as cool like i think all of that aside I at least live and interact with strangers or whoever with this idea of like, be who you are. I don't give a shit. I don't care who you like, what gender, what race. Like, I don't care about any of that. Like, I don't care if you like to do this, don't like to do this. In fact, it pains me so much when I see, because I have someone who really struggled with it. It pains me when I see someone who maybe they don't want to smoke and they're at a party and someone offers it to them and you can tell that they don't really want to or yeah, you smoke. Oh, sure. It's been a long time, but like you don't want to just say no. It kills me. That's why I never, I'm like always like, yeah, just do your thing because it kills me so much to see people give into this peer pressure for like no reason over people they don't care about. Yeah. But it's also uh, like, it used to be easier when you say about this college times or our high school times or the first seasons in the league when we were like 18 20 years old and it was easier like to go after the game to, for the party and drinking and to practice the next day now no, we are 35 years old and if i go for a party and i drink like i need three four days of break oh, yeah. <laughs> to, to come back to practice to Dude, practice even if i don't get a good night of sleep if I like miss a couple hours and I get like five hours of sleep, I need two or three days to recover from that five hours of sleep. You might be different, you guys, because you have kids and you're, you know, built like machines. You have Polish genetics, also. No, which no, 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 but <laughs> not anymore. Like this, <laughs> this uh, get us, got us also here. Like our our bodies struggle a lot after after alcohol, after yeah, after sleep. Like when I have to, because I have a small kid. Like she's two and a half, but when she was like waking up six times in the night, and even if my wife was uh, getting up, getting up uh, for her, and I was just hearing this crying and everything, it was like practicing after was terrible. Mm. Like after the, and especially that I was, and I'm still the guy who likes to sleep, but. Uh, it's changed like com it's changed like completely after I have a baby, and this will be for sure the topic for uh, uh, any other episode to to speak about this. But your life changes when you when you have I a baby, and the when you say like I like to sleep when you have a baby, it means like yeah, six hours is okay. Like <laughs> during the night, like six hours with one break during the night is perfect. Like before. I would say like 10 hours, 11 hours I can sleep after the game. Right now it's six and, and I'm really fresh in the morning. Well, okay. So what I really, I wanted to, we call it like, I wanted to give you a soft ball here, a nice little uh, soft pitch because uh, we are, we, we do eventually want to keep these episodes somewhere around an hour. So they're a little easier to digest. Yeah. We won't normally go into such like wild depth into different directions because we want to be able to answer, I don't know, three, four, five, six questions, like as many as we feel we want to get to. 
Um, but I wanted to just, just so people understand and set the tone a little bit. But you, know that, but you know that today we had only one question and I know. So here's what I'm gonna, hour. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And I, that's why we're, we did such a good job with that one question and turned yeah. it into so long, but let me pretend to be someone so people get the idea. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Uh, Hey, Andre. Hey, Taylor. I'm Dimitri from Greece. I'm playing in my third season <laughs> in Greece, okay? And I just had a kid. I'm having my first child, and uh, the child was born two months ago. I'm not sleeping at, at all. How did you manage staying fit and getting good enough sleep to train and perform and having a child? Uh, love you guys. Love the show. The show is the best. It's the number one show in the world. We love you so much. Uh, thank you. Okay, thanks Dimitri for your question. Actually, the year after, like first year of my kids in this beautiful world was the worst year of my volleyball career, I think. Like the, was, the worst level, uh, I presented the worst level of, uh, of me like on the court and... This was how long ago? Like one year and a half, so like two seasons ago. Mm. I think I played the worst, one of the worst seasons uh, with injuries and with shit level of me and and that team yeah i think we this was the the season that when we didn't got to get to playoffs okay that was shit season like in the last game or oh. like the last two games and so that was <laughs> that was because of you <laughs> no <laughs> oh. maybe also no for sure also but uh yeah there are seven people on the court but and the coach but uh it was really really difficult and i felt tired i didn't sleep well like my back hurt because you are trying to uh to take care as much as as my wife to the baby like because the philosophy of helping your wife is is bullshit like we are speaking about it many times like you're not helping you're responsible in the same way like you have to do almost the same things like oh, i cannot feed her with with my breast of course but we have to like do the same stuff and we are th there is two of us in this like we are in this together so i didn't have this vibe that okay i'm the professional athlete so i will sleep in the hotel or i will sleep like in, in the other uh, floor of our house not to hear you because i have practice tomorrow <laughs> and i have to be fresh no no uh i didn't feel that like i didn't feel that and I, I felt like uh, i need to i need to be in this with her so i struggled like i struggled a lot like with my physical form in this in that season so what what advice would you give to this guy oh, i'm sorry what advice would you give to dimitri uh, someone who's having a child and he still he wants to play and perform. He already have a baby? Or yes, the baby's, baby? the baby's two months <laughs> and he's already not sleeping. And guess what? He's the, he's the only one with a job right now. He needs to perform and have yeah, this, this job. Is, yeah, this is also, this is also hard. Uh, Dimitri, stay strong, man. Dimitri, sleep, <laughs> Dimitri, sleep, sleep whenever the baby is sleeping and, uh, and try to try to i don't know maybe work more with the physio after the practice uh, no, as, someone, as someone who doesn't have a kid you know i'd say maybe focus on the away games oh this is oh. good advice focus on the away games like you can sleep in the bus <laughs> <laughs> you can sleep in the bus like now when i'm a dad i understand like uh, my colleagues from the past seasons when i was single and they had had a baby and they were like sleeping all all the way like on the on the bus to the different city where we play the away game they go out of the bus they get out of the bus they go to sleep <laughs> to their room they just come for the practice they come back to bed and they are not they are not doing anything else than sleeping on the on the away games except of course playing volleyball and practicing so use the away games to show your best level and try to survive in the home uh, in the home games i mean how long does it last i mean you both have kids by the way for no, those I, don't don't know. I have a dog man that that's who is that something. little girl you were walking around <laughs> <laughs> it's his no. wife it's his wife <laughs> some shitty joke sound <laughs> you no, that's you more both, like you this. both <laughs> you, you both have a baby <laughs> nah. yellow card <laughs> over there <laughs> okay, just kidding. I don't know. I guess you're just old, and so I assumed you had a kid. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm sorry for that. But uh, I feel like we need to give more respect to your family, man, because I remember your best season when you were flying, when you met your wife. 
Yeah. This guy was killing it, man. I he had the best, best season of my guy life in the court. when I when I met my wife and we started to date and was well, started to date and we won the sil- silver medal. He was crazy. I was the best, best, bl- the best blocker of the league and mm. okay, maybe not the best blocker. I had the most blocks in the in this in that season in the league and uh, yeah. And after we had a baby and I had mm. the worst season. So <laughs> everything is balanced, man. So That's right. <laughs> what about Dimitri? <laughs> you need Dimitri, you need to just sur- you need to survive this season and Okay, well let me ask you cuz now how old is your daughter? Two and a half. Two and a half. Have when did things start getting better? Is there light at the end of the I tunnel think, for I Dimitri? I think after one year. That's why uh, we are <laughs> waiting for the second baby <laughs> in May. <laughs> just when things are starting yeah, to get better. I'm feeling so good that yeah. we, we already forgot like how it is. So uh, we are waiting for the second baby. Yeah, so the first year, maybe first 10 months are... Okay, first three months are terrible. But after, like, it's getting better and better. But I, I would say that after 10 months, 10 months to one year... It's, it's better. Back on track a little bit. Back on track. All right, well, I have, some, I have some advice as someone who doesn't have a kid. Yeah. Here's my thought. My thought would be, can you find a way? I mean, you said uh, in your partnership with your wife, yeah. you like to have an equal role in doing what you can. To but really I also feel it, it, it's not a pressure of my wife. Like it's also of what course not. It's it's what I feel like. I because you're a fucking good guy, dude. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, but I want to like I want to be there. Like I want to be there for my daughter also. Like of it's, course. It's, it's so interesting. Like to to be a father. Like you have such a huge influence on uh, this small person. Like what I, whatever you do and whatever I say to her, she will try to. Uh, process this in her little mind and she will remember this probably for the rest of his, of her life because this is like these first three years are really important also yeah she'll be talking about it when she goes to therapy when yes, she's 30 <laughs> for sure like, for sure for sure so this is really important yeah okay so okay so my my thought was the advice i would want to give to this guy is can you find compromise if you're feeling like so dragged down and tired that you can't perform can you, for example, one night or find a night out of the week where you can sleep? Like, can you can you find that balance with yeah, your prob- wife? Yeah, prob- probably the one before the game is the the best choice. Like, yeah. if you have to choose, let's say, okay, so before the game, I need to sleep like in the other room, like, or I maybe I'll go to the hotel. Like, th- that, that's why I was also speaking with our president because we have a lot of kids in the in the team. Maybe this could be also also solution for uh, for us to go to the hotel like the, the night before, like all the team because we have physio in one in one building with us. We eat the same because you know when I was young, like I was not always eating good food because I didn't have money. You're in freaking pierogi didn't land, have dude. money. No, I ordered pizza or eat some fast food or whatever, and I didn't eat healthy food and. When you are in the one hotel, like a team before the game, you know what we are eating. You see what others are eating, like the cook is preparing stuff. And maybe this is also social. Football players do it many times, like football teams, like professional in the in the best leagues in in Europe and in the world are doing like this. And it's normal. So maybe this is also a solution for Dimitri and his team <laughs> to convince the, the president to go even in the home game uh, during the home games, like to, to the hotel the night before. To, to get uh, to have a good sleep that's a really interesting because um i couldn't ima- i i love being at home for home games and at the same time i actually always feel like i play better away because i am secluded in a hotel and i have nothing better to do than like get a good night's sleep tonight and be more focused for my game because I'm just I have this space that's clean and it's just got a few things in it and yeah. you know that's so really maybe, maybe this is a solution. Okay, yeah. uh, I think that's all for today because we said that it will be around one hour and uh, we will finish right here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'm so proud of us for finally doing this. I'm so proud that uh, I'm actually so. I just want to say I'm so grateful that you um, were an inspiration to like really be someone to help me create this idea and make it something better than I could do on my own. And I really mean that because I was going to just do it, you know, like I've been doing my other podcast with like a zoom or like with my iPhone and like, I'm still, I've been a while since we I put can episodes, pack this stuff, pack the microphones. And we, when we are yeah. on our away games and do some interviews or post or, or podcasts, but you know, what's, what's the most difficult, like the most difficult is to start and we've already started. So, 
Right. Nobody will stop us. <laughs> no, and you know what, dude? For for those of you who are listening, um, please send in questions. Like I am sure of it that when more people send in questions, like we talked about earlier with this kind of like peer pressure of like you don't want to be the first one to expose yourself. That's what this show is about. Expose yourself. Yeah. Get naked. Send us a video. <laughs> Be authentic. be authentic if you want to get naked and send videos send to him and this is his instagram <laughs> over here if you want to just send the question send the question to me this is my instagram send in dms yeah uh the videos short videos with your question with your struggle or whatever like around volleyball and not only uh and what else ah the episodes i was thinking and this episode hopefully uh because while you are watching this, it's Tuesday, 16th of January. And the next episode will be on Tuesday, 23rd of January, hopefully. Okay. This is the idea. I, we will speak about it. I even try to manage the, cal the, cal the calendar and yeah. I love that. Tuesday. Uh, so this was Volley Hotline. Thanks for watching. Write the comments. You can write also comments under the video on YouTube. We will try to read them all and uh, and answer your uh, your thoughts. Let us know what you think uh, about what we did today. And be a part of the community. I mean, this again, we're doing this to build the volleyball community around and the world. To so. be a part of community, you have to subscribe. That's right. Subscribe. You have to like. You got to ding notifications. You got to do all of it. This was Volley Hotline. Catch you guys next time.